I'm live, it says. All right, so it is Thursday, May 7th at 1.50.23 p.m. I just came in off of uh, a bike ride, which in just like four straight days has become essentially a habit. The thing that I've been doing is that I've been remo removing clocks from my life, basically just making my day a series of rules I must follow in order until I get to the end. And of course you have to plug in um, scheduled events in time, locked meetings and conference calls and shows if you're doing it that way. So there is some structure to it. But as far as looking at the clock and saying, oh, it's eight o'clock, okay, I have an hour to do yoga now. And then after my yoga, I have to, it's it's too anxiety inducing for some of us. So I'm coming up, you know, this, this quarantine has been working for me on two levels. I'm coming up with a personal management system that balances my chemicals, my, you know, sort of high energy production uh, mentality that I'm going into this project with, you know, it takes a lot to keep me going. And at the same time, the result is that I'm dealing with sort of childhood relationship issues with my mother and, um, you know, just having a successful vocal performance yesterday uh, was really breaking through a kind of just lifelong issue, you know, and I, you know, I under, I, it took me a long time to understand my mother and that she didn't know that I was, you know, a hunchback and that my, you know, she just kept being stand up straight and that I get my spine into like this weird position and can't breathe. So it's taken me a lot as an adult to get to this point and marijuana helped me and it's helping me now. I have a little bit, my mom doesn't like me smoking and she said, you can't smoke in the house or you can't when, when I got here. So uh, I have a little bit in a bag. I did a fleet freelance project a couple uh, months, six, six weeks uh, back. And uh, I used the majority of that money for my son's birthday and graduation present. Then I gave my mom a little bit of money for, to, she's bought me some stuff and I wanted to pay, partially pay her back for them. And then I saved a little bit to get some weed and um, so twice a day I go out and I have just a tiny little bit, you know, I don't get super baked or anything like that. And then it helps my body relax and I have come to a little bit of mindfulness practice, especially with my for help from my friends, Jim Kincaid, who is in, in Colorado and is sort of like this um, wandering psychedelic preach astrology preacher for Jesus for a new age, like he's got it, you know, and right now he's trying to get organized into something bigger, but it's got like standard Jesus Christ superstar dynamics going in because it has the sort of overtones of a new agey cult kind of a thing, very bohemian. And that's outside of the norm of the mainstream, but I get these people, I understand where they're coming from. I, and even if I don't believe as strongly in astrology they do, I can see patterns in the universe and some of astrology makes sense to me uh, from a practical standpoint. But I think science can become a religion and that's one of the things that we're facing these days. So astronomy became the religion of astrology, um, but I would be surprised if there weren't people who were in control of the system who understood the metrics of all of that. But that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to sort of link those two things together and guys like, um, like my friend Philip in China, who is um, Irish, but he worked in Scotland where he sort of fell out because of a Me Too kind of getting canceled for, you know, a small scandal. And he had a small but intense following on Twitter and he just lost his public persona. And he and I have been talking a lot about that and what we're going to present, what that show is going to look like. We're going to really talk about it and are we going to do graphics for it? You know, it will look high end. Um, you know, is there a way to get a better camera set up, you know, between now and then so it looks professional? And so I'm doing that and trying to herd these cats because like Jim and Philip, you know, there's others. And I, I sort of see my friend Blake, if you watch the show Antisocial Distancing, he's the local version of that. He's my like 
you know, partner in crime from uh, from Portsmouth, and he lived in various areas throughout Hampton Roads. So he knows Hampton Roads, but an entirely different demographic. But he's so funny and charismatic, and we just sort of had this fun chemistry since day one. You can go back uh, 1111 in Space Cadet, and you can see a video my friend Lisa shot of the two of us, kind of how our dynamic would be, you know, I kind of go between these sort of revolutionary rants into babbling about techno babble, and he kind of keeps it grounded. And then he's got like, you know, he's hilarious. And he does Blake's takes every week where he, uh, <laughs> he, we put a graphic on the screen, like the daily show about, you know, a movie or a, a show on Netflix. And he taught, you know, he just sits back in his chair and it's got this SNL Eddie Murphy vibe to it. And he's just so good at it. Um, and then I'm, I'm kind of my more um, high level, um, but geared towards the public seeing a range of who I am is the reality war. So I'm upgrading the branding on the reality war. I'm upgrading the branding on Space Cadet. I'm turning watching a show called Space Cadet Space Cast on May 27th that will be more polished. How much Philip is going to be a part of that is still TBD. We're talking every day about what that part of the show will look like. And then I'll have different kind of correspondence like The Daily Show. We've got Jim out in New Age Astrology Psychedelic Guru Land. And then we've got, you know, Blake in the 757. You know, and, and I would love to have my mom like as, as one of them. That would be the perfect, like if we found the right shtick and could get to some lines of communication about Trump and, you know, they can just see a little bit. They don't have to come all the way over, but if they could just see a little bit of the hypnosis that they've fallen prey to, like everyone, um, that would be helpful. Um, and I think that discussion is interesting and me crossing the sort of threshold of, of doing this musical number and talking to my mother eloquently about the things I have to do with my body and voice to, and she sort of got it because I learned to speak her language, but it feeds all the way back through because all of those shapes are connected to like traumas and depression. And, you know, this was me, this was the inner me as a teenager, right? The most emo of emo because I had just experienced a fucking school shooting, which was nine years before Columbine. And I've been talking, you know, 30 plus years. And, oh, we wring our hands. Why did these things happen? Well, why don't we talk to someone like me and we can tell you exactly why they happen, but they don't. You know, uh, media makes money from setting people in opposition against each other and it's become militarized and people have become like basically turned to little platoons of frontline weaponry and statistics and demographics having to see which which rich corporation gets control for the next little bit. <sighs> but it's not oh no, the scheme that to get the people, it's like this is the way it's always worked. Do we want to change it? For all intents and purposes, all of the mechanisms that got us in our present system happened before we were born, all of us who are alive today. And we can just blame our ancestors and say, you guys got us here, but you're not alive, so there's not much we can do about it, but it's our responsibility to change it. And as the baby boomers mercifully start dying, and I'm not saying that about my mom or my stepdad or anybody I know, but just from a cold statistical standpoint, like if they can't find a way to kind of come to the center on some of this, you know, Trump evangelical Christian hypocrisy, I mean, it doesn't mean they have to be pro-abortion suddenly to just say it's not becoming a Democrat. It's just turning on Trump. That's a different thing. Um, and he's so rude and crude and a hypocrite and a liar and a philanderer and the Christian evangelicals, the only explanation is a kind of hypnosis and they need to see it. They need to see it and I can't make them see it. I can come as close as I can, but you know, ultimately it's my mom. And that's why I want to get her as a correspondent on the show. It's Mother's Day. My friend Blake had this amazing idea that, you know, we should all do live in person. He should come over from... You should come since my mom is, you know, she invited friends over this week. She has voice students in the house. She's not really practicing social, social distancing and they're spitting and stuff because they're singers. So if anyone's going to get it, it's going to be my mom. She has kids come in and spit at her all day still, but that's what she does for a living. So she can just stop the money coming in. She tries, she does some of them on Skype, but it's physical. And I've given her a bunch of new information about people who are asymmetrical. Maybe it'll help her out. So I talk a lot and I'm learning to be more quiet, but it just sort of 
comes together and comes out in rushes like this. It's part of my disease. I am non-neurotypical. I'm not looking for special status. I'm just looking to be understood. Um, anyway, all this to say, the spirit of the Voltron hath come upon me. <laughs> uh, that's the sort of like mental framework hashtag that I'm working on to try to like bridge a particular conversation. And the best I can say is, the spirit of the Voltron hath come again, hath come upon me. Um, so I'll leave it there. And um, thank you for listening to this 10 minute ramble. This is, I do a little 10 minute monologue occasionally. I'm pretty good at a perfect, and not perfect, but a 10 minute little uh, stream of consciousness from the soul kind of a thing. Some people can follow it, some people can't, but expect to see like 10 minute just you know, this is like the confessional booth in the reality show, right? Like, it's just me sort of talking and saying, here's what I'm experiencing. And, you know, I hope someone can hear me.